Hi everyone, let's start with our new chapter which is on analysis of variance. Analysis of variance is also called as ANOVA. So the words AN here is coming from analysis. O is from OF and VA is from the words variance. So for your information, ANOVA has two functions. The first function is that it describes a test for variance and the second function is it compares several population means to determine whether they are equal. We will learn two things in this chapter. The first one is that we will compare population variance or we call it sigma squared. And the second one we will compare population mean or we call it mu. Three learning objectives will be covered in this chapter. The first one is that you can apply the F distribution to test a hypothesis that two population variances are equal. The second one, you should be able to use ANOVA to test a hypothesis that three or more population means are equal. And the last one, you can use confidence interval to test and interpret differences between pairs of population mean. The remaining two learning objectives will not be covered in this chapter. Analysis of variance or ANOVA will use F distributions. We have learned about Z and T distribution. Now we will learn about new types of distribution. We call it F distribution. So let's look at the characteristics of this distribution. The first one, there is a family of F distribution. It means that your F distribution will have different shape. Each time the degrees of freedoms, or we call it DF, in either the numerator or denominator change, a new distribution will be created. Second, the F distribution is continuous. It means that the number will keep going or will keep continue until infinity. The third one, the F statistic cannot be negative. If you look at this diagram, the value start from zero and will keep going until the positive infinity number. In other words, we can say number four, the F distribution is positively skewed. And the last characteristics of your F distribution, it is asymptotic. It means that as the F value increase, distribution will approach the X axis but will never touch the X axis. The first functions of ANOVA is to compare two population variances. So this is the formula to compute our F. F equals to variance in sample 1 divided with variance in sample 2. We can also set that F equals to standard deviation squared in sample 1 over standard deviation squared in sample 2. So the top one is called as numerator and the bottom one is called as denominator. Okay, the larger of the two sample variances is placed in the numerator, we will have the ratio to be at least one value. So let's look at the examples of these two population variances. A health services corporation managed two hospitals in St. Mary's North and St. Mary's South. The mean waiting time in both emergency departments is about 42 minutes. So the hospital administrator believed that St. Mary's North has more variation than St. Mary's South. Okay, if you look at this word, variation, it means that we are talking about variance. Variance means we have to use ANOVA. Okay? Let's look at the examples of comparing two population variances together. Lemmers Limers offers limousine service. The president of the company is considering two routes. One is via US-25 and another one is via I-75. So he wants to study the time it takes to get to the airport using each route and compare the results. He collected the following sample data in this yellow box. Using the 0.10 significance level, is there a difference in the variations in the driving times for these two routes? Okay, if you look at this question, it asks us about is there a difference? Difference here means you are talking about two tail tests. And the next one, Variation. Variation means that you have to use ANOVA because ANOVA is the analysis of variance. Okay, next, you have to apply the formula for your F. What is the formula for your F? F equals to standard deviation squared for the first sample over standard deviation squared for the second sample. 
okay how to compute our standard deviation okay so if you look at this formula for standard deviation you have to compute the mean the mean is actually inside the formula of your standard deviation that's why you have to start with computing the mean and then after computing your mean you will get 58 0 0.28 0 0.29 and 59 then just plug in these two means inside the formula of standard deviation then you will get the value of standard deviation for the first sample and the standard deviation for the second sample and just put squared on top of them and divide these two you will get the value of your f okay to answer the previous question we have to write our six steps of hypothesis testing so let's start with step number one we have to state the hash null and hash one and we will begin with our hash one hash one is variance in sample one is difference or not equals with the variance in sample two for H0, it is just the opposite signs of our H1 and contain the equal sign. So variance in sample 1 is equals to variance in sample 2. Sometimes you may find it hard to write the hypothesis in statistical form. So you can just refer to the previous question. What was the question? Is there a difference in the variation in the driving times for the two routes? So you can say that there is a difference in the variations of blah 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 and your hash null you can just say there is no difference or equals in the variations of blah 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 okay so step number two we have to select our alpha. In this case, we choose 0.10. Step number three, we have to compute our test statistic. We will be using F statistic. We have computed F statistics in the previous slide. So this is the working for our F statistics. So you should get the value of our F equals to 4.23. Step number four, we have to formulate the decision rule. Okay. Before formulating the decision rule, we have to compute or we have to find the CV. So how to find the CV? You have a few steps. First, you have to refer to F table. Next, your alpha because we are talking about two tail tests. So 0.10 divided with 2. Then you will get the value of 0 0.05. Next, you have to look at the degree of freedom for numerator. So the degree of freedom is n minus 1. So your n is actually 7 minus 1. You will get the value of 6. Next, look at the degree of freedom for denominator. So what is our n? Our n is 8. 8 minus 1, you will get the value of 7. So if you look at this yellow box, it is your F table. So the first one, degree of freedom for numerator. So you will select 6 and look at the degree of freedom for denominator. You will look at 7 because 8 minus 1 is 7. Then you will get the value of 3.87. Okay, so you will get your CV equals to 3.87. Okay, then you have to draw your diagram. Okay, so in the middle, not really in the middle, at the ends of your left is 0. And for F, you will start with 0. And then you're going to have positively skewed diagram. Okay, so where is your CV? CV is equal to 3.87. So this shaded area is called as rejection region. Okay, so... Step number five, you have to make a decision. How do you want to make a decision? You have to compare your CV with your F statistics. So what is the value of your F statistics? Your F statistics is 4.23. Okay, if I want to plot it in the diagram, so F is somewhere here, 4.23. So 
What is your decision? You have to say reject hash null because the F value is inside the rejection region. Step number six or the last step, we can conclude that there is a difference in the variations in the times to travel the two routes. Okay, so if let's say you said that you reject the hash null, you can say that our hypothesis is true or you can say there is a variation between these two routes. Okay. The second functions of ANOVA is to compare two or more population mean. For your information, ANOVA can be divided into two. The first one is called one-way ANOVA and the second one is called as two ways ANOVA. So for the purpose of our syllabus, we will be focusing only on one-way ANOVA. The second point is talking about the historical backgrounds of ANOVA. ANOVA was first developed to be used in agriculture. So the term treatment was used to identify how different plots of land were treated with different fertilizer. So previously, you have two plots of land, land A and land B. So they put fertilizer in these two plots. Okay, and fertilizer is actually the treatment. So different treatment or different fertilizer will have different variations or different impacts. If let's say in land A, you have a very good fertilizer. So land A will be more fertile compared to land B. Okay, a treatment is a source of variation. So we have a few assumptions under ANOVA. The first assumption is that the samples are from population that follows the normal distribution. Second assumption, the population should have equal standard deviation. And the third assumption is that the populations are independent. It means that these two populations, land A and land B, should be independent to each other. Okay? Second examples of ANOVA in terms of comparing two or more population mean. Okay, Joyce managed a regional financial center. She wishes to compare the productivity as measured by the number of customers served among three employees. Now we are talking about three people. Four days are randomly selected and the number of customers served by each employee is recorded. Is there a difference in the mean number of customers served? Okay, when you look at this word difference, we are talking about two tail tests. And when you look at the next word mean, if we want to analyze the mean, we have to think whether we are talking about one sample test or two sample tests or perhaps ANOVA. Okay, so how can we differentiate whether we have to use one sample test, two sample tests or ANOVA? So we have to look at the employees or how many people. In this case, we are talking about three people, Wolf, White and Corosa. So one sample test cannot test three persons. Two sample tests can only test two different population. Only ANOVA can compare two or more population mean. So you can compare three population mean, four, five and so on. Okay? This slide just want to tell us on how to compute the F statistics. As we know, ANOVA has two functions. The first one, ANOVA can compare the variance for two population. The second function of ANOVA is that it can compare two or more population mean. Okay, if let's say we want to compute the F statistics for comparing the variance, the formula is variance in sample 1 divided with variance in sample 2. However, if we want to compute the F statistics, if we want to compare two or more population, the formula for the second one is a bit longer compared to the first one. I will explain the formula and the working in detail in the next slide. Okay? There are three steps to compute our F statistic. If let's say we want to compare two or more population mean, the first step is that we have to find the grand mean and component mean. So what is this grand mean? Grand mean is just like the total mean. How to find it? Summations of all our observation. We have 55 plus 54 plus 59 until 48 divided with the total number that is 12. And that will give us the value of 58. Okay, we also have to compute the component mean. Component means means that the mean for each of the group. 
So we are talking about wolf, about white and crossa. Each of them should have their own mean. So we call it component mean. So how to compute the first component mean? We talk about wolf. So 55 plus 54 plus 59 plus 56 divided with 4 because there are only 4 observations under wolf. And that will give us the value of 56 and 70 for white and the last one is 48. Okay, second step, we have to find the total variance. So total variance is also called as sum of squared or SS total. Okay, for your information, total variance can be divided into two components. So the first component is called as treatment variable and the second component is called as random variable. Okay, so if let's say treatment variable plus with the random variable, you should get the value for total variance. If later in the question you are given the total variance and treatment variable, can you compute the random variable? Definitely yes, because how to find the random variable? If let's say you are given total variance and treatment variable, just minus total variance with treatment variable. Okay, so you have to know that Treatment variable and random variable have many names, okay, or we can say they have many terms, okay. So let's look at the treatment variable. It can also be called as variance between treatment, okay, and it can also be called as sum squared treatment. For the random variable, it can also be called as variance within treatments or sum squared error. Okay, so all these terms, total variance, treatment variable, and random variable, have their own formula. So let's look at the formula for sum squared total. Sum squared total is referring to our total variance. What is the formula? Summations of x minus the grand mean squared. So x is just our normal observation. What is the first observation? We have 55. And then we have to minus with the grand mean, which is 58 squared plus the second observation minus with the grand mean and so on. By doing this, you should get the value of 1082. Second formula, sum squared treatment. We have summations of component number multiplied with component mean minus grand mean squared. Okay, what is the component number? So if you look at wolf, how many observations do you have? You have four observations. Then you have to multiply with wolf mean or component mean, which is 56 minus the grand mean, 58 squared. And look at the second observation or so second component. We have white. White has four observations. And multiply with the component mean under white, we have 70 minus the grand mean 58 squared and you can also do it for corosa and those will give us the value of 992 the third formula we have sum squared error the formula is summations of x minus component mean squared okay so each of these observation for instance for wolf you have 55 until 56 so all these observation should minus is on mean which is 56. While for the observations of white, you have to minus with its own mean, which is 70. And you can also apply it for corosa. All the observations from 47 until 48, you have to minus with 48 as well. Okay, and those will give us the value of 90. Okay, the last step is that we have to find the F statistics. So what is the formula for F? So you have sum squared treatment divided with k minus 1. We have computed sum squared treatment, which is 992 divided with k. What is k? k is the source of variation. So how many persons are we talking about? We are talking about 3 persons. So k is 3 divided with sum squared error over n minus k. Sum squared error, we have computed it. We got the value of 90. Divided with n, n is just the total number. We have 12 and k is the source of variation, which is 3. Okay, this division will give us the value of 49.6. For your information, the first part here is called as mean squared treatment.
treatment and the second part here is called as mean squared error. So mean squared treatment divided with mean squared error will give us the F statistics. Okay, now we have to look at the rules of thumb because you have to know how to interpret your result. So what does it say? If the ratio is about 1, the two estimates are about the same. But if it is different from 1, population mean are not the same. In this case, we got the value of 49.6, which is far away from 1. So what is our conclusion? We can say the population mean are not the same. Okay? You can skip this slide if you want to because I have covered it in the previous discussion. You can also skip this part because the formula to compute the F statistic has been discussed in the handwriting form, although it may look unprofessional, but at least you can see the whole overview or the whole steps of how to find the F value. Okay. This is another example of finding the value of F or ANOVA when we want to compare two or more population mean. A group of four airlines hired Bruno Marketing Research Incorporation to survey passengers regarding their level of satisfaction with a recent flight. 25 questions offered a range of possible answers. Excellent, rated with four, good, fair, and poor. So the highest possible score was 100. Bruno randomly selected and surveyed passengers from the four airlines. Is there a difference in the mean satisfaction level among the four airlines? When we talk about difference, basically we are referring to two tail tests. And here we want to compare the means of four airlines. So if you want to compare two or more population mean, we have to use ANOVA. So let's start answering using six steps of Hypothesis testing. Step number one, we have to state the null and alternate hypothesis. Our H1 is that the mean score of all four airlines are not equal. Okay, and for H null, it should be the opposite signs of our H1. We can say the means of all these four airlines are equal to each other. Okay, step number two. We have to select our alpha or level of significance. Here, we will decide to use 0 0.01. Okay, step number three. We have to compute our test statistics. We have to use F distribution. Okay, so this will be your work. You can just compute it using the long working, three steps. Okay, in this slide, it has provided us with this yellow box. So here you can see that you have source of variation. So what is this source of variation? You have treatment and error. So basically treatment here refers to your sum squared treatment. While error is sum squared error. And total is sum squared total. Okay. So sum squared total is combinations of sum squared treatment plus sum squared error. Okay. So degree of freedoms. Here is our K minus 1. And the second one, 18 here, is our N minus K. Okay, so mean square here is our mean squared treatment for the first one. And the second one is mean squared error. So when you divide mean squared treatment with mean squared error, you will get the value of your F, which is 8.99, okay? So you can just try to practice this at home, okay? So this is just a summary of the long calculation. Now, step number four, you have to formulate the decision rule. So you have to find your CV, okay? So the CV is the same CV as we have discussed previously. So let me draw your diagram. Because we are talking about F statistics, so your diagram will look like this in the mid, at the ends of your diagram is 0. And then your CV is 5.09. So let me write it here. 5.09. So this shaded area is called as rejection region. Okay, so step number 5, you have to make a decision. So how do you want to make a decision? You have to compare your CV with 
the F statistics. What do we get for our F statistics? Our F is 8.99. So 8.99 is perhaps somewhere here. This is our F statistics. So what is our decision? We have to say reject hash null because the F statistics falls under the rejection region. Step number six, we have to interpret our result. We can conclude the populations are not all equal. So when you reject your hash null, you can say the mean score of all four airlines are not all equal. Okay? When we reject the hash null, we are saying that the means of the four airlines are different. But which one is different from each other? In order to check that, we have to use pairs of the mean using the formula of confidence interval for the difference in treatment mean. The formula is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus t multiplied with square root of mean squared error multiplied with 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. Okay. If the confidence interval includes zero in our answer later on, we are saying that there is not a difference between the treatment mean. What do I mean by includes zero in our answer? Okay, if let's say you compute this interval, you will have two answers, right? Because we have plus minus in the formula. So let's say we got the answer of negative 7 up to 17. Here... The zero is inside our interval. So we are saying that there is no difference between the mean. Because zero is inside our interval. If let's say we got the answer of negative 6 up to negative 1. And zero is not inside our interval. So we are saying that the mean is actually different between these two groups. Let's try to apply the formula for pairs of mean. Assume that the mean for the first sample is equals to 87.25 minus the second mean 69 plus minus our t value with the significance level of 95% which is equals to 2.101 multiply with square root of our mean squared error 33 plus multiply with 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6. Our interval is equals to 18.25 up to 7.793. In this answer, 0 is not included in the interval. So we can say that the mean for these two groups is actually different from each other. Okay? We will not discuss a two-way ANOVA and the remainings of this chapter. So our lesson will stop at this slide. So please take note of this. Okay?